Yeah. So thank you. That was a wonderful, enlightening session that we had. There are lots of questions that have already come in. So okay. I'll read them for you, or um, you could take them over. The first one we have is from uh, Gopal Shrivastav, and he says, "How to form quest uh, objective questions? How to form objective questions that test for understanding? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good question. This is an art form, believe me. There's been a lot written on this, and um, I myself, when I was studying in the U.S., I have." designed multiple choice questions where each so there's no giveaway option you know there is no option that's an obvious wrong answer many of them are they are based on typical um, misconceptions that students might have right so you have to understand your students very well you have to understand the subject matter very well and you have to design your options it almost feels like you're laying traps it feels a bit cruel but that is the way to test for understanding uh, asset you know asset they set very good multiple choice questions and some of those are available online you must be knowing about asset you know every year they test schools in india they, they have good questions right so i hope uh, uh, gopal uh, shrivastav ji you are is that okay with you Oh, you want to add something more? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll read the next. Yeah. Would you? Uh, would you like to add something more to it? No. Right. So I'll I'll move on to um, Arunji's question, and that is: Should we not allow children to select their topic for project instead of giving them a list of projects to choose from? Your answer to that? Yeah, that's a very nice point. i tend to uh, be a little more uh, in, in the in on the spectrum between unstructured and fully structured i'm somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. i like to i like to introduce something to students and then within that offer choice so uh, so we can say for instance right now i'm teaching about human evolution and i said would you be interested in figure, in finding out how other animals evolved and they were very excited and i said why don't you choose your animal and do the research and come so choice within structure is, is something i uh, that's a personal preference but there is nothing wrong with starting out with what shall we uh, learn about together the thing is that you need a lot of time and then each one will have different ideas and if you can support each one's learning nothing like it there's tremendous motivation that comes from that the 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 other downside to allowing each one to choose their own is there's a there's a beauty in uh, group learning which you lose you know when you do it my way you get both which is why i like it you get the group learning and the individual so yeah so that was nice thank you uh, shivam would you like to um, ask a question or should i read it out I think I'll read it out. Yeah, please. Yeah, you could read it out, please. So, ma'am, as we know that uh, this uh, the teaching learning process which we are talking about, it is very much helpful and uh, but it it will take a little bit uh, because right now the education is more about the result oriented. Everywhere, uh, parents, teachers, and uh, our management system expects the result. so how can we apply that uh, keeping the time constraints in mind because uh, it will take a little bit uh, time and, and it will take a time to adjust also yeah i agree that it may be difficult to find the time but i just i usually give this example suppose you give me one hour and say you have to teach uh, th this group of children how to multiply two numbers and you have to teach stitching you know stem stitch so then what will i do i'll divide half uh, one hour into two halves and i'll teach multiplication for half i'll teach stitching for half right and if you tell me there's going to be a stitching exam after one hour then i'll spend most of my time on stitching right but the thing is that teaching for an exam and teaching for understanding don't need to be so mutually exclusive no we have to find ways to bring that together 
to integrate it and i feel that a creative and an excited teacher can do it to to a great degree to a great extent the sad thing is that at the end i have to tell the student look you write in the words of the textbook don't write in your own words that's the great pity yeah if i have an unimaginative exam but one thing uh, indian exam systems are also moving there is a lot of improvement on the ground and i think teachers also have to like push for this kind of change and movement and you know make it happen thank you uh, thank you ma'am so i uh, i think i'll take the i'll take the opportunity to ask one question more so uh, is there a difference between understanding and knowing and when do we know that understanding has taken place yeah good question so see knowledge <clears throat> can be isolated in different parts of the mind right so i can know something and then i can know something else so and a lot of teaching is like that okay i mean you can just take the fact that your history teacher teaches something leaves the class and the next period is physics that teacher teaches something but they don't speak about each other's subjects at all whereas actually the world is one when children enter school the world is one undivided unfragmented whole right so knowledge is being gained in different classes in different chapters within the same class but connections are not being made understanding is all about connections between isolated pieces of knowledge and it's also about being able to apply and this is something we all know so <clears throat> i would say understanding can be demonstrated when you put a different situation a new situation an un, an unseen previously unseen situation where the elements are all they have been studied and you see how well the student does right in fact a student may just impress you with the way they are attacking the question right they don't have to get it right so this is something which our current exam system is not designed to because then correction becomes a problem how do i correct it in an objective way so we've tied ourselves in knots are there already questions that have come in i'll request uh, uh, mr gopal to unmute himself gopal if you could un unmute yourself and ask your question yeah, yeah. good good evening sir good evening uh due to covid 19 the expectation of the parents also more than and uh, my question is there ki education is lagging behind 10 year back how to hmm. cover yeah certainly certainly i mean the this is happening right i mean not only you know india but other parts right you know the learning efficiency right is is really uh being challenged isn't it right um yeah i mean i see that uh, you know we have come to really understand that learning is not just only coming from teachers right um but it also is with the parents and anyone that they are uh, surrounded with right it can be parents it can be anyone that surrounded i think um because you know no no children is here and and mostly we are grown up adults and whatnot i think um we have our own full time job but at the same time we need to also think about putting a hat as an educator right we also need to think about putting on a hat as an educator of what whatever that is you know it can be at times teaching your children how to solve a problem math problem but also you can as a parent teach them you know um what you can read you know article that you you might want to recommend that they read or a book that they want to read or maybe a linkedin you know seminar that they can uh, listen to or you can even have a dialogue with them right a conversation as to what kind of individual that you need to become right so just you know relying on the teacher over zoom or google hangout or things like that is going to be very limiting right so this is where i think everyone has to really think about putting on a hat as an educator of some sort right So even though you have your full-time job, yeah, I know it's tough, but in in, the, in these times of uncertainties, I think you should be very comfortable of considering your yourself as an educator of some sort, right? 
and teaching our next generation does not just fall in the hands of the teachers at the moment. It has to be everyone that needs to take part in teaching and learning. Okay, and also as an adult, we can also learn from children as well, right? Um, so we also should be enjoying sharing and learning, and that's how we can really um, help uh, us to be the right person that we can be, right? Yeah, and then also, yeah, academically, we may be a little bit slowed down, but um, I think where things are kind of opening up, I think now there are so many different mediums, right? Online mediums and all these different things. Technology has, in a way, made us available with so many different varied uh, uh, platforms for learning. And so our job is also to introduce this to our children as well, right? Yeah, we can do many things. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think Nandita also has a question. She's mm -hmm. typed it down. I'll request her to unmute and ask a question, please. Sure. Yeah. Oh, she. There may have been some technical problems, and she's. She may not be in the group right now. So the question over here is: There might be a tendency to to misuse the freedom to think and act on their own. How does this? How does one guide students? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, that's where um, your formal, right? Your positional authority needs to be exercised, right? Um, you know, young people, you know, whether if you're in the elementary or high middle school or high school, what have you, um, these are the times when you are you will need to actually, um, you know, be with them, um, you know, with a, a, a discipline, right? You have to provide them some guidance, right? You have to provide them some uh, protection in a way uh, so that they are not, you know, uh, becoming lousy and going all over the place. Uh, you need a bit of a discipline in place. And that is very important, right? So when I say formal authority and informal authority, you need to know how to mix both, right? Sometimes you need to use your position, your authority, as mom, dad, teacher, principal, okay? You know what? I am here with the discipline. I am here, okay, with a structure. You actually need some discipline in order to focus on what you need to focus, okay? But at times, you need to let them think on their own, right? You need to help them make them think. Help them make, you know, help them think on their own, right? So depending on the circumstances you are in, right? Sometimes you have to use some disciplinary measures but you also need to you know let them be freed in their thinking as well that's why this education is not again as i mentioned to you it's not just about teaching them how to solve a problem okay or how to solve a math problem or read but it goes beyond in this right when you are teaching them how to read or how to how to solve a problem yeah you need to discipline them right you have to sit down solve this be focused okay uh, get away from distraction, okay? It's time for you to really learn. But at the same time, you should be knowing, you should be encouraging them to think on their own. That's going to be very important, right? So we should be knowing how to use uh, both aspects of formal and informal authority. Our job is to ensure that they become a successful person, right? Um, and so we have to know how to adapt depending on the circumstances. We need to know how to improvise depending on the circumstances, right? So if you need discipline, then you have to use discipline. But if you need their, you know, sort of a support, you know, make them to free, freely think uh, and think on their own, be creative, then you can do that as well. Context is really what you have to be uh, understanding, right? You have to be aware of the context. Mm.